There are so many projects that are included in Star Wars canon, ranging from movies to shows to video games to comic books, even to novels. But here are five canon projects that you might not have known about. The first piece of canon material I want to talk about are actually a trilogy of novels that introduces my favorite villain in all of Star Wars, Grand Admiral Thrawn. But this is absolutely one of my favorite trilogies in all of Star Wars. This trilogy takes place in the canon novels written by Timothy Zahn. Timothy Zahn actually wrote the original Thrawn trilogy, but they hired him again to rewrite this new trilogy for the new canon. Now, I know a lot of people don't read the comics and don't read novels, but you have to check this out because it's incredible. This gives us a great introduction to Grand Admiral Thrawn, showing where he came from and how he actually joined the Empire. The first book starts with him officially joining and then eventually he climbs through the ranks to Grand Admiral. Not only does it show where he came from and how he joined the Empire, these novels are really just a deep dive into Grand Admiral Thrawn's character and the way he sees things and the way he sees combat. It's incredible. Obviously, everybody knows he's a great military strategist, especially if you've watched Rebels or the Ahsoka show, but this book dives into his thoughts, into his mind as battles take place, so you can actually read what he's thinking. Not only do you get a deep dive into Grand Admiral Thrawn as a character and the way he thinks about things, he teams up with Darth Vader in the second book and it's absolutely fantastic. Using all of the skills that he has, he figures out that Vader is actually Anakin without even confirming it. Thrawn is also one of the only characters that in the novel, he tells Darth Vader to his face that he has three separate ways he can kill him. Speaking of Darth Vader, the next piece of canon I wanna talk about is actually a video game, but not just any normal video game like the Jedi Survivor series. This is a VR video game. This VR game is called Vader Immortal. It's broke up into three episodes and it's absolutely a blast. It's so fun and the story is actually really good. This game actually takes place on the timeline between Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One. Throughout the game, you're playing as a force sensitive smuggler who's actually a direct descendant of Lady Corvax. During the game, you find out that Vader's actually been looking for the descendant of Lady Corvax so he can access the power of the Bright Star to bring back Padme. There's actually a really great scene in like the first episode where you see Vader take his helmet off and talk to Padme, it's crazy. Throughout this game, you're gonna train with Vader, he's gonna teach you a lot of different things about the Force, and eventually you're gonna fight him at the very end because you're gonna realize that the Bright Star needs to be destroyed. It's really interesting too because you can actually see the effects from that game to the sequels. In Rise of Skywalker, that opening scene is on Mustafar with all those trees. And the reason there are trees there is because of the events of that VR game. Moving on to the third piece of canon that you might not know about because a lot of people, again, they just don't read comic books or novels. This is the Vader series comic books. This comic book series just really dives into Vader as a character and you learn so many different details about him and his life that just makes you feel for the guy. You get a lot of details on his suit specifically and his relationship with Palpatine. You also get one of the coolest scenes in Star Wars. I wish they would show it in a movie or a show him bleeding his kyber crystal to turn it red. Not only do you get to see that, you get to see where he actually got it from. And yes, it's pretty freaking awesome. Something else that the comic book does really well and it's kind of hard to capture on screen for either movies or shows, you get to see his real power. I'm talking he fights a lava monster inside of lava. Not only that, he also deflects some tank shots destroying multiple tanks. It's crazy, using his lightsaber. Really throughout the series though, what you're gonna realize is all he really wants is to bring back Padme. I do highly recommend that comic series, especially if you love Darth Vader. Now there is a newer piece of canon material that has been going for a few years now, but we're gonna see the end of it with the Acolyte. I'm talking about the High Republic era books and comic books. Now, if you don't know anything about the High Republic era, this is basically like the peak of the Jedi. I will preface this by saying this wasn't exactly my cup of tea, so I haven't read all of it because it, I just don't find it that interesting. I don't think it's that good, but a lot of people do love it, so you should definitely check it out. During the High Republic era, you have a young Master Yoda who is in his prime. I think he's like 200 to 300 years old in this, and he's very powerful, but I will say, before you jump into it, expecting it to be about Yoda, it is not. But if you do pick up this time period in Star Wars, these books and comic books, you get to see what it was like when the Jedi were at their peak. And you get a lot of events from the past that really affect modern Star Wars. I'm talking like explanations for like hyperspace lanes and communications across the galaxy. Now, like I said, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It wasn't mine, but I do think that this time period in Star Wars is best told on a screen rather than on a page. That's why I'm kind of excited for the Acolyte, but I'm also not really excited because like the writer didn't really watch Star Wars and has said some very controversial stuff, but you know, whatever. And now the fifth and final piece of canon that you might not have heard of, another novel called Shadows of the Sith. Overall, I think the story of this novel is pretty good. I have read it and I did enjoy it, but it doesn't do what it set out to do. I think this novel is the biggest attempt by Disney to make Luke Skywalker's character arc make sense for the sequels. 
and I think it fails. To be honest, I think this book actually contradicts the sequels even more. However, it does do some things that we haven't really seen before, like showing some limitations of Force Ghosts, which is also something that I didn't know they had a whole lot of, especially since in the sequels, Yoda literally used lightning to strike a tree and Luke caught a lightsaber. Now going back to what I said a few seconds ago about this contradicting the sequels even more, that's because in this novel, Anakin shows Luke Exegol. Yep, you heard me right. He, Luke sees Exegol and he knows something is happening there. This also shows some limitations of the Force Ghosts because Anakin like does a fight scene and then he gets tired and he can no longer appear as a Force Ghost, which is interesting. But whatever, basically this entire book was to focus on Luke Skywalker and kind of bridge the gap between what we saw in Return of the Jedi and then what we got in The Last Jedi. It really does that by focusing on the main villain of the book and I think it fails miserably. Before we jump to conclusions though, I will say Luke in this book is the Luke we know from Return of the Jedi, not the sequels. Overall, it's a decent book. You should definitely check it out, but it does not help with the sequels at all. So there you have it. Five pieces of canon that you might not have known about and make sure you check them all out, even the ones that I said I didn't like or didn't care for all that much, because who knows, maybe you'll like them and that's okay. Either way, if you like them or if you don't like them, if you want more videos like this one, you have to let me know down in the comments. You can leave a like, that helps, and subscribing is huge. I mean, especially if you want some more Star Wars content. Make sure you share this with all your Star Wars nerds. I appreciate you for watching, and may the Force be with you.